And what about you? I am a wee Metabo impact starting to fail me. Still works, but uh, I was using it the other day and she let smoke out the back. Made a bit of a stink. So, had a bad normal. I can't complain, this has served me well. I think I bought this uh, 2014 maybe. You can see it's all sticky there because I had sticky tape around it and, uh, because uh, that was starting to come off and uh, the socket doesn't retain anymore, it just falls off on you and uh, it was starting to stop and start on me and if you had it on a tight nut it just wouldn't, it wouldn't go. And then finally one day the smoke just started coming out of there. So can't complain, but it gives me an opportunity to do an AVE. We're gonna take this baby down and see how she works. Well, that's not the purpose of this video really. The purpose of this video is that this is a brushless motor. And this video is about motors in general. Now it's a it's a very, very skipped overview. I'm not gonna go into every different type of motor and and all that there because it would make a very, very long video. But we're gonna have a wee look. This is known as a three phase brushless motor in this thing. But I don't like that terminology at all because how do you get three phases out of a single DC supply? It is not really three phase. Uh, guys that scope um, fuel pumps and things like that, they're seeing that what apparently it seems to be three phases, three separate phases on their uh, on their scopes and stuff. And yes, you will see that. And what we'll do is we'll, we will have a wee look at that as well because this does still work. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see that. Uh, but we'll go into uh, a wee bit on motors and uh, just discuss why it isn't really three phase and how how you, you you would you would need you need separate phases but there it's not really three phase years ago i did uh, i put together a wee a wee course a wee ac ac circuit theory three phase course uh that relates to the power industry and uh, these are my notes that i did to take this course so i'm going to zoom you in on that and get you into focus so these are my own uh, my own notes. So I don't mind showing you these. There's the date, 2013. Tempest Fugit, that's what I always say. Anyway, we'll start off with a bit of a uh, bit of an intro there. Relationship with vehicles IR. Simple stuff. But the big focus was uh, that you have resistance and reactance. And you get reactance from capacitive uh, Capacitive reactants and inductive, inductive reactants. And that's very important if we're going to talk about uh, motors here. So uh, now this is AC theory. I wrote this with a, a view AC. So, uh, but we'll we'll go into that in a wee minute. So we have inductance, capacitance there, and uh, yeah, that's inversed. So okay, we'll turn the page there. So this is this is the important bit here, and you'll see why this is. important important rlc circuits and uh, this this acronym here is civil c-a-v-i-l so uh i'll put a wee note there explain this over here. so with capacitance there the current uh is in front of the voltage and the l there is inductance and that means the current there is behind the voltage so that lags it and this leads it so here we'll have a wee phaser diagram of that and you can see the uh, the C down below there. Uh, voltage triangle, impedance triangle. So this is the reactance, that's resistance, and that's impedance. So, uh, and this is where you get your phase angle, which you can is known as your power factor, that angle there. So there's a wee bit, what's this here? Uh, yeah. So that's the same sort of stuff there. Uh, VC lead lags the current there. Phaser diamond examples. Uh, we've got a Pythagoras steam. Whenever you, whenever you go to like level three sort of stuff, uh, you sort of bend all this and you use imaginary numbers or complex numbers. 
Uh, but for, at this level, uh, you can do a lot of calculations just using trigonometry. Um, let me see, what's that there? Uh, purely resistive circuit uh, power equals VI, right, okay. So uh, that leads us into power factor, and uh, yeah, there's a bit on trig there. We use theta, uh, well I use theta anyway, some people use phi as Greek letter, but that doesn't make any difference. Uh, we bit more power factor, power triangle there again. I see overhead line underground cable, so you have resistance inductance with capacitance parallel off it there. So that's you get a lot of that. What's this resonance? So this is all about transformers now. Um, so there's th three phase four uh, balanced star, and that is a phaser diagram. So three phase proper three phase. You have a phase, and it's 120 degrees from another phase, which is 120 degrees from another phase. Phaser diagrams rotate anti-clockwise just by where you draw them, so that is, uh, you measure the angle there. So just a wee note on that. I've noted here, uh, what is a phaser diagram? Well, this is important now, and in, in, uh, when we're talking about phases, this, this, is what, this is what makes phases different from anything else. So a, f a phase is a vector quantity. So a phase or diagram uh, I've written here, otherwise known as a vector quantity. In other words, it has a magnitude, which in brackets here I've written an amount and a direction. So it has an angle. So say the amount was 12 volts and then it has an angle of so many degrees. So that's what brings it out of phase with, a, with another one. So it has a magnitude and a direction. Uh, that's the red phase at zero. At, at uh, the zero line, and uh, the w the voltage uh, on the alpha phase at zero is there, so you can see the difference in the angles. Right, I'm using R and Y, uh, red and yellow and blue to denote the three different phases there. So yeah, VRO is the reference phaser. Uh, that's that's it. So anyway, they're just they're just labels. They're just colors. So there, there's different uh, labels for different phases, and uh, that's changed over the years. It's a phase rotation meter, uh, AC three phase, and it's denoted there as red, yellow, red, yellow, and blue, and they're color coded. So you see, there's no neutral there, and you press the button, and it tells you what direction the uh, the phasers go on. So it's clockwise, if it's normally what's called conventional rotation is uh, it goes clockwise. There are certain parts of Northern Ireland and it does actually go anti-clockwise and it's, uh, that is actually correct. This is what you would get in the Republic of Ireland. This is uh, ERA Supply Board, as it's called the wire sorter, made in Ireland. Uh, it's made in Cork there. So they use uh, yellow, green and violet and they're using a neutral layer for this application. So this this is a this is basically a resistance box. Uh, there's just different resistances between between each each uh, one of these here, and you connect them to your three phases, and then you've a pickup device that that differentiates between the three different resistances. That's what that is. Uh, it's not, I'm just showing you it because of the, uh, the 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 coloring is different in different territories. Nowadays we're all Europeans, and we all uh, well we are dominant European. And uh, we use these different colors here for the, denote the three phases. And instead of, uh, we, we refer to L1, L2, and L3. So that would be L1, which is a brown. And uh, the neutral then would be blue. So it conforms to what would be in your flex of, so there's L2 there as what used to be the yellow phase. And that's L3 as uh, used to be the blue phase uh, would be in this. So what's all that got to do with this, you're asking? The hell is this lunatic on about? Okay, as I said right at the start, people refer to these as a three-phase motor, and uh, because of what is really three-phase of what I've just described there, uh, I don't really like that terminology. But you can use it if you want, but it's this is not really three-phase. Uh, so we're gonna take this down. I'm, not, I'm gonna spray the, the, the grief of me on screen this. And uh, it's, it's actually, it's very well put together and you'll, you'll see it in a minute. So there we go, clamshells apart. 
and uh, we'll lift this bit off and that'll just slide out and in there we can see our planetary gears you can see that three of them on the impact part of it and uh, this then is the bit we're interested in this is a well, it's called a three-phase. It's a brushless DC motor. There's no brushes in it. And look how compact it is. And uh, it's super high torque out of this and pretty efficient as well. Uh, this is a starter motor. It's quite a big starter motor. It's a quite a beefy starter motor. Uh, it's out of a Mercedes. And this has the commutator, uh, which you usually find in a DC motor. So, uh, yeah, that. And then... That has planetary gears on it too, which is very unusual in a very unusual in a starter motor. So there's this extra big bit here that uh, drives that solenoid pushes that forward. So yeah, that's quite a see so you can see why they call them planets. They rotate around there. But anyway, commutator. Why is there no commutator in this? There's a commutator in that, right? What is a commutator? A commutator reverses the direction of the current flow. That's what that's for. Now, in this particular one, there's four brushes that uh, go on here, and hands are starting to get dirty. And uh, yeah, that's what that does. So that, that reverses the current flow, so and that keeps it spinning in that direction. So uh, without going into it too much, uh, that's the basics of it. So this thing here, it don't have a commutator. So how the hell does this work without a commutator? Here's another motor that doesn't have a commutator. This is a pump motor, it's a my heating system. So this is an, is an AC motor, this is a single phase AC motor. There's, there's only an AC supply available here, 50 hertz, 240 volts. So what we'll have here is we have this is a big, fairly big capacitor. That is a starting capacitor. So that's the, that's the get that, uh, the assist to get it turning. So what we'll have in here is we'll have a field winding and another field winding at 90 degrees to the, the first field winding. So we have a field wind and another field wind, and then this, because uh, what we talked about in my notes there, that the current leads the voltage. If you remember our civil C I V I L, so I, you have I and then V with capacitance. So because and that creates a phase shift. So that is the uh, the wee power triangle I showed you that the current and the voltage aren't in the same plane with capacitance. So that excites this. If it wasn't for that capacitor, this thing would just sit and, and oscillate. So it would, and you could maybe, you could maybe if, if you were able to turn it, you know, manually to get it to excite, to get it to start, then it'll go. And you, you could do that in either direction, actually. But uh, this is a starting capacitor. Now, there's probably in this wee box here, uh, there'll probably be a PTC relay which will turn this capacitor off once it's started. Some, some, of, some of the other ones, some of the advanced ones, maybe have a, a smaller running capacitor. It turns the capacitor off uh, to stop that from burning out, basically. So, the, but the main bit is this has uh, two windings in it. And sometimes this is referred to a two-phase motor because you have one winding at 90 degrees, the other winding. But it's not two phases at all, of course. That's just ridiculous. How do you, how do you get two phases out of... Uh, a single phase supply so you're, you're just offsetting it and uh, you're using the the, the current uh, leading the voltage in the capacitor to to, to create a, a phase angle that's what that's what you're doing so the same sort of uh, carry on is going on in in this wee bio here now this is uh, as i said has no commutator on it. and uh, what basically uh, they did now this was in, this was sort of invented in the 60s, I think, it's, it's, there's nothing, they've really only come to the fore now because they've made them a lot cheaper. Uh, the, the original ones of these, and there's, there's still are ones out there for more sort of advanced applications, would have uh, Hall effect sensors in it, and that's to monitor the timing, so the, the motor's actually timed. And, uh, you know, there's still ones, like a bigger a bigger ones and stuff like that that have high torques and stuff would, would still have that. This one here has a wee trick up its sleeve, and it's all done with this uh, microprocessor-controlled uh, brain box in here. And uh, there's a big 
heat sink on it there and uh, yeah so that's completely uh, encased in there so we can see nothing in that that's all sealed which is great so this this is came to the end of its life usable life really anyway but it hasn't really you know it's, it still actually works but uh and this one here's uh it's, it's speed controller on it as well to just to increase the complexity of it so uh and there's our, our trigger so, so but it's this wee motor that we're interested in so anyway uh how come we can do away with the commutator? How come this thing here needs a commutator and that one doesn't? So what they, what they basically came up with was, uh, you know, instead of having the commutator inside, they basically put the commutator on the outside. So I'll maybe show you a wee graphic of that to try and explain that. So what you have here is the commutator on the outside, as I said, and this is just, uh, it was, this would be like a single phase one here. But as you can see, once this will rotate, then it'll be it'll be off these uh, electromagnets here. So then it would just stop when it gets to this position. So you need to add in more of these coils. Here you can see the, the six coils added into our external commutator. And uh, so there would be one phase as it were, there would be another phase, and there would be another phase as it were. Not really phases, as I say, not in, in comparison to AC circuit theory, but uh, you can see that they're color coded and uh, so that's uh, a continuous uh, rotation then. So once the once it, the rotor moves around, then it'll be acting on by that one, it'll be acting on by that one, and that'll keep a, a constant rotation. So the maker's processor needs to control the, the timing of when these coils are, are energized. And uh, so you've, you've plus or minus, so you've, you've six coils at plus or minus, so that's the three. Uh, apparent phases so uh, as i said there are advanced ones that actually have hall effect sensors in it so it knows where the where the rotor is so uh with respect to the with whatever uh coil it's it's at now this one here i don't believe uses that because that's quite elaborate and uh this one is th these the brushless motors in, in these type of devices are you know they're pre pretty simplified very very compact as you can see and it all takes place down here in transistors that switches all this. So uh, what happens is if you pass a magnet through uh, a piece of copper wire, it actually creates a current that opposes that force in the first place. And that's called Lenz's Law. So, and it's, it's called a back, a back EMF. So uh, in motors and stuff like that, that is a, an inefficiency. And there's, you know, designers put lots of stuff in to try and, you know, take away. There's other inefficiencies, hysteresis losses and, and uh, heat and stuff like that. And that's why you see these laminated. And uh, anyway, Lenz's Law. So uh, I, have a, I have a wee demo here of Lenz's Law. I'll, I'll, I think it's quite cool. I'll show you that. So here we have a copper bar uh, in the background there just sitting up against a, a couple of wee socket sets and uh, there's a steel screw that was out of that that was out, out of that there so I'm going to slide that down that and it's just going to drop like a stone due to gravity and here's a wee magnet and uh, it doesn't stick to that so there's no force there but if I slide that magnet down this this uh, copper bar it's going to actually induce a current in that copper bar and that then is going to oppose the travel of this so it's going to slow this down so let me see us here so is that cool So that's Lenz's Law. Right, so the guts out of the carcass there, and uh, we we'll have the scope connected up. There's our, our three inputs there, the white, the yellow, and the blue there. So uh, we've connected them up to the scope. So we'll give this a wee chitch here. Get my fingers in there. We 
get down to the scope. Oh, gonna block, gonna block it on you. So those are three, or three phases, as it were. So we'll just stop that. So there's our three phases, as it were, uh, all occurring at different times each other. So, yeah, that's uh, that's really it. Now, uh, that's all really I'm going to tell you about this. Um, we can see the uh, the external windings there. Let me try and get that a bit better. So hopefully this will come up here. Uh, there's our external commutator on the outside of the rotor. That's the coils in there, all different ones. And you can see them there, they're, they're labeled uh, U, V, and uh, W. And there they are again, U, V, and W. On the opposite side. That's our three apparent phases. I keep saying apparent because I just don't like this term three phase because it's it's not really it's just the one is three phase. So and that's uh, the three three wires in the other. So there you go. I'll uh, I'll maybe put this back together again and just hold on to it for uh, for parts maybe. So there's the guts of it there. So all the magic, a big heat sink there, all the magic occurs in this bit where the transistors are that uh, are just switching. All they're doing is switching those coils on and off and uh, it gets the timing from the back EMF. So there you go. Maybe a wee bit more on, on motors, a wee bit of theory. Very, very much of an overview. Now, there's an awful lot more to it now. There's a hell of a different types of motors out there and uh, for all different applications. And it's all to do with the torque that you need and uh, efficiencies and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah, that's a uh, that's well-built wee machine now. So anyway, thanks for watching, as ever. And I uh, hope, uh, hope you get something out of that. Maybe you did. Maybe you think I'm just talking a lot of your nonsense. Uh, so all the best and bye-bye.